Hi, this is Bill from HowToVanish.com. One of the most extreme things people can do to protect their privacy is to expatriate from the United States. Whether it's because you don't like having to check in for every little thing that you do with the government, or if you're already an international person and you don't like having to pay taxes when a lot of the money you make and a lot of the money you spend doesn't ever touch the U.S. There could be a million reasons why you want to expatriate, and a lot more people are doing it now. It could increase your privacy and even save you a lot of money in taxes. Now, fortunately, the U.S. recognizes the right of every person to relinquish their citizenship. But there's one major caveat. You have to already have the citizenship of another country before you try to expatriate. That's pretty much true with just about every country in the world. First, you have to get citizenship somewhere else, and then you can go through the process of expatriation. So what does it take to expatriate once you've already gotten citizenship in another country? Well, you have to do three things. First, you have to take a statutorily enumerated act of expatriation. That's a lot easier than it sounds. You have to do it voluntarily. And third, you have to act with the specific intent of relinquishing your nationality. So first of all, what kind of act of expatriation are we talking about? Well, you could go as far as fighting in an army that's engaged in hostilities against the U.S., but I don't recommend going and fighting for the Taliban or something like that. The more common way to do it, and the way I much more strongly recommend, is to formally renounce your citizenship before a diplomatic or consular officer in a foreign country. So basically, you just have to go to that consular office and make an appointment and go through the process of expatriation with them. Your act of expatriation also has to be voluntary. Fortunately, the voluntariness of your action is usually presumed. It's going to take some kind of evidence to show that it wasn't voluntary, like maybe somebody was holding a gun to your head or something like that. Not usually going to be a problem. Now, the third thing, you have to have the specific intent to relinquish your U.S. nationality. Now, usually that's pretty easy, and having a formal declaration in front of a consular officer in a foreign country is usually going to be sufficient. But there are some other facts that could be raised that could rebut that presumption that you had the specific intent to relinquish your U.S. nationality. Some of those things like might be, what if you were in Brazil, you are a Brazilian citizen, so you relinquish your U.S. nationality while you're in Brazil. But two weeks later, you take a plane and you fly to the U.S. and you stay in the U.S. for several months. That might be raised as evidence that, well, you didn't really have the specific intent to relinquish your U.S. nationality because, look, you just went back and spent a whole bunch of time in the U.S. right after you relinquished. So you do have to keep track and make sure you don't do anything that might be presumed to be evidence of a specific intent not to relinquish your U.S. nationality. But that's pretty much it. Now, the practical side of it, usually all you have to do is make an appointment with your consular office uh, in whatever country you want. Go there, sign some papers, fill out the documents to relinquish your nationality. You'll have to file the forms and wait for them to come back to you, but it's really not much more than a couple of office visits. So if you think expatriation is for you, uh, go ahead and check out HowToVanish.com and get more information on expatriation. It's an extreme step, so make sure you really want to do it first. This is Bill from HowToVanish.com. Use your powers for good.